Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. Today we are doing Mission Quest 2, uh, Shinryu, or the second set of Mission Quest stages. So this is the Shinryu on the second set. Um, and this one was a Final Fantasy 9 team. Um, this fight I didn't think was too bad. The enemies are super squishy. It's kind of been the theme because they're really restricting you on like your team comps. But there's some pretty good 9 characters out there. So we're running uh, Beatrix, Garnet, and Quina. So uh, yeah, this team uh, seems pretty darn good to me. Um, and we go ahead and we get this one done. Now, this fight here had a couple of mechanics I thought were slightly annoying, um, but we definitely got by. Well, the first annoying thing was I did the thing again. This is two two mission quests in a row where I forgot to actually read like what team they wanted, and I just brought in like a Kelger team and absolutely stomped it. And I was like, oh, that's right. I have to use certain uh, <laughs> certain Final Fantasy games. I forgot about that. So I actually had to do this twice. I scrapped the other recording. Um but yeah, this team's pretty good. So the two main things to watch out for here is these enemies will resist everything. Um, so you have to get weakness damage. You have to have some type of elemental enchant in peril. And they specifically, to cancel their force, want thunder damage. So uh, Beatrix and Garnet are really built for this because Beatrix with the BT will thunder enchant the party. Um, Garnet can also thunder enchant the party in the Peridot Thunder Flash stance. So yeah, we've got our thunder enchant good to go. So we're going to be dealing good damage the whole way through. And then Nines even got Quina. So if you for some reason don't want to bring thunder damage, you can just do resisted damage and you're still going to get max HP damage because Queen is there. So Nine actually has a lot of ways to deal with this fight. So I didn't find this nearly as restricting as restrictive as like say the type zero fight. Um, so yeah, this is very, very good um, and not too bad. Now the, the other nasty mechanic that this boss has is they go into a mode where they will basically counter everything you do. And part of that counter is putting a blind on you. Um, now, there are a couple of ways you can deal with this. I think, you know, having like, say, a vice friend that you could bring in and just have their BT effect up, that's one way to prevent it. But another strat you can do, which is kind of what I'm doing here, I didn't really do it intentionally, I didn't really think about it ahead of time, but you can just over buff yourself. So if you fill all of your buff slots with framed buffs, then they can't debuff you. So I would say if I were to redo this fight with a similar team, I would probably bring calls and focus on like over buffing myself so that they can't put the debuff on. It's probably the easiest way to deal with it because Beatrix alone puts so many buffs on, right? And Garnet has a few buffs also. So this is a pretty good team for like trying to over buff yourself. Um, definitely a way you can deal with it. You could also just bring calls like Lena that have debuff evasion, right? That's another way you can kind of deal with it. So I think, you know, our, you know, between calls and friend units, I think there's a lot of ways you can just get around the debuff thing. So as long as you understand like, Hey, the blind is going to be there. You kind of want to avoid the blind if you can. Um, and then just having thunder damage to cancel the force. If you think you need that is another thing. Now, the other mechanic that these guys have is when you kill one, they re-raise themselves. Now, uh, we've done a fight like this before where like you literally had to kill them at the same time I think it was like the lawn and rain fight because they were really pushing aoe damage Now i'm honestly not sure if that's how this one works or if you just have to kill them each twice because in both runs that I did I killed one before the other by accident in the kelger team It was hard because it was a lot of single target counter damage and I couldn't really control who was getting hit um, and then in this fight it just kind of worked out, you know between beatrix's and um Queen's traps like that's those are also like kind of very single target damage focused and i have less control over who takes more of the damage there right so the damage is fairly imbalanced throughout i do try to keep it balanced um, but even in this fight it's a slightly imbalanced where i do kill one enemy first they instantly arise so somebody can let me know in the comments if the first time around if you do kill them at the same time do you actually win the fight um, what i found is is in both runs i just killed them twice and they were so um, squishy, it didn't matter. Because I was like deep into a force. Like once they re-rose, I basically just hit them a few more times and they were dead again and it didn't matter. So, um, and I definitely know you don't have to kill them the same time. Um, because on both runs that I did on the second time I killed them, I did kill them separately and they didn't re-raise. So um, I was pretty good there. And I didn't even bother to read the boss info. So sure, I probably could just read it. Uh, but yeah, if anybody in the comments wants to let me know, like if you did this fight, if you were able to kill them both the first time at the same time, if you got the victory or if they did re-raise anyways, that would be good to know for players that are maybe struggling with the fight. Um, but if you want to do, do it the old Joe way and just run in blind and kind of figure it out as you go, that's kind of how the fight goes. I killed them twice and it was fine. <laughs> so uh, we're getting pretty close to our force time here. And I kind of opted to use uh, the Aerith friend here just to charge. I was kind of, you know, I was kind of torn on what I wanted to do. Because with the Aerith friend, there's like kind of two ways you can use her really effectively. One 
is what I did here was I just kind of brought her in early. So I believe I did, I was kind of talking through it. I wasn't paying attention, but I'm pretty sure I like led fairly early with the queen of burst phase. And that serves two purposes. It gets queen as frog stack set up. It gets uh, queen as BT effect up, but it also just gives me some free force gauge to get a little bit of a lead. Um, and this is also the type of team where I don't need to operate a big burst phase during the force. We can kind of just let the fight go, let the traps work do a bunch of damage because all three characters here have off turn so i'm fine just letting the fight operate outside of a burst phase during force time um so yeah we we kind of just led with uh queena to do that and then we just use Aerith to kind of fully charge up now the other way you can use Aerith is if you kind of are just able to get to force time on your own the other thing i was planning on doing here potentially was just naturally getting to my force time and then using Beatrix's force, which she's the force I want to lead with anyways. But I know Aerith Echo is really good on Beatrix. So then I was going to bring in the friend Aerith for maybe Queena or Garnet. Um, and then just ramp off a bunch of Echo and get Gage really high. But I'm like, you know what? I probably don't need to bother with that. So I kind of opted to focus on just getting ahead of the enemy and just getting to my force quickly. Rather than going a little bit more slow with it and then having the big Aerith ramp, right? So here we're just going to do a normal Garnet turn and a normal uh, Queena turn. And then, um, actually, so Beatrix, unfortunately, so this is the other mistake I made. This is maybe a fight where I did not want to have my D3 and D6 passives on, but I forgot to change them. So Beatrix being red, you notice, look at how far back she is, right? We got yet another Queena. Another, we got, what, two Queena and two more Garnet turns. So that turn rate down and that speed down, you really see that in effect when you have one crystal character affected with it and the other two aren't. Um, so I actually have to wait a while to get to the Beatrix uh, force time, right? So... Uh, we actually give the enemies a little bit more time to build up their force, but it's okay. We don't let them get all the way there. Um, but, you know, in a fight like this, I probably would have been wise for me to just put my normal, like my, I think U1, U2, and A1 are kind of the three I've been using on a normal team. So I just have to, it's something new, right? This whole crystal passive thing is still very new. It's just something I have to get into the mindset of I need to look at it before every fight and make sure I'm changing my passives every fight. Because pretty much outside of doing like the crazy off-turn Kelger comp, I, I probably usually would not want those D3 and D6s on. Um, however, that being said, I do plan to ride this Kelger team comp quite a bit. Um, one of my previous videos I kind of labeled as this is my new favorite team, and it is Reno, Kelger, and Beatrix right now. It's a super fun team. So I think if I can get away with doing it, I'm going to try using that team quite a bit. It's very fun. And I have to take advantage of being done with my Red Crystal Room and really, like, beat stuff down with these powerful characters, right? I mean, dude, just look at the stat difference there, right? Like, look at Beatrix at 40,000 HP compared to Garnet's 18,000. Like, just seeing the HP stat alone. Um, I am planning to do some fun shenanigans with... Um, with Lena, um, because Lena, once again, she has stuff that scales off of HP. So I'm thinking I can run Lena with like two red characters and then I can put red passives that like raise HP. Cause one of the D passives makes it so my HP can go 20% over my max. So like, I think <laughs> we can get some really crazy numbers out of HP and I'm really curious to see what Lena can look like. Um, the only unfortunate part is I haven't done any crystal room for Lena's actual color, but I can definitely bring a couple of reds and, and make us look really good um, on that that front right all right so here we go we're finally in a force time uh we're gonna let beatrix's thing go off now the enemies have tagged us with a little bit of blind here and there but right now we're in a pretty good spot with no blind so hopefully we can get through and here's the thing if you do get the blind on it doesn't mean you're always going to miss you actually still have a pretty decent chance to hit i feel like it's about a 50 50 shot um, that you get the hit in so um, even when you're blind it's not like the end of the run you don't have to get rid of it um, you just want to try to be careful about maybe, you know, popping an FR Echo or popping like a BT attack can kind of be risky because if you miss, you lose a lot of damage on that, right? So just something to be aware of, but we are going to Echo with Garnet. And this was nice bringing Garnet out again. Um, she's a very good character still still one of the best supports in the game. So there garnet there got blinded, right? <clears throat> so in this will affect her off turn, right? So sometimes off turns will hit and each enemy is a separate calculation So you'll see sometimes when you're blind if you're doing an aoe attack Sometimes you'll hit one enemy. So if you miss one, it does not mean you're gonna miss both It has its own proc chance on each enemy All right now queen is gonna cook a little bit Got him down to about 50-ish percent here. 
rose petal counters coming through. Definitely like that nice off turn damage for sure. And then we got the heat traps, dude. Those hit so hard. <clears throat> and this was a really nice, once again, shout out to Mission Quest, right? For like giving me these requirements because yeah, Queen is a character that's super good and I just barely ever use them. And, and I need excuses to break out these characters more. So uh, a lot of fun with that. Now, Queen, I got blinded too. So kind of unfortunate, right? And that's my bad. Like I should have prepped with some calls a little bit earlier before this. I'm pretty sure a Raijin call would like stop that, right? Especially because they're off turn. Um, it's nice because when they do stuff off turn, it won't subtract from their debuff. So that Raijin would still be at two turns. So yeah, I probably should have sunk that in. And I think I had Rydia call too. I just didn't like think to use them earlier in the fight. Um, but those are really good ways to avoid the debuffs, right? Raijin, Rydia, um, you can do, once again, have uh, different friend units that can help you with that. Different calls that can help you evade them as well. But it's fine. Like, the blind's only two turns. So, like, if you're not in force time, a nice trick you can do is if you get blinded, you can just hit a couple of AAs back-to-back -back and that blind will just fall off. So, that's a trick I've done, too. Um, in certain situations, to get rid of debuffs that I don't want. But during force time, you definitely don't want to do that because that's a big waste of force turns. I would rather take the 50-50 shot and maybe miss than, like, just waste AAs trying to get rid of the debuff, right? You're much better off just taking the blind shot and maybe you hit, maybe you don't, but then yeah, at least you pass it to the next character. <clears throat> so Queena, I'm noticing BT effect is about to run out. So I'm like, all right, we'll hit it. And this was risky because we're blinded, right? And then this is what can happen. I'm pretty sure, oh no, so we hit one of them. Um, but I'm pretty sure we do an FR attack or something and maybe it already happened where it was just a full miss. I think we do an echo with Beatrix and it's just like a full miss at some point. Or it might've been... Uh, might have been queen up, but that's fine. It's like, we still get the gauge. Uh, we still get the HP up and the gauge doesn't go down. And, you know, queen, I at least hit one of them. And it did kind of balance the damage there a little bit. So you can see one enemy's at 20 and one's at four. So that left enemy needs to take a lot, but we took the really big heat trap there, which now it, it's balanced out a lot more. We're at 11 and four here. So I'm thinking with Garnet, you know, Garnet doesn't really have anything single target focused. So I'm like, well, let's pop a frit and just get some good damage there. Solid damage, 800k, I guess, isn't the craziest. And they heavily resisted it, so yeah. But I'm like, all right, let's pop the LD and see what we can do here. All right, so the left enemy was a little too heavy, so the right enemy just, you know, got re-rose. And then the left enemy dies, and they're going to re-raise. So once again, you can let me know in the comments, if I had killed them at the same time, would I have gotten the victory there? But it didn't matter because I could just kill them again. And the second time they did not re-raise and we were good. So I just killed them twice. And it really wasn't that big of a deal. You know, it seemed like it took me a while to get to this point. But now that the gauge is so high, like they just melt like butter, like super fast. So here we go. We're halfway through force time. They are basically at full health and we're just going to melt them to oblivion here. And we are getting resisted because once again, we are getting fire enchanted, which is fine though because we got Queena. So... It doesn't matter. Queen is just going to give us big time damage no matter what. So we're going to get max HP damage. All right. And then here we got Beatrix, I think. Did I Holy Knight here? Or did I? No, I think I Echo here. Yeah, because we got to keep this Force Gauge going as long as we can. Because uh, we would like to finish them off before this Force runs out. We don't want to have to grind up to another Force. So we have some tricks up our sleeve here. We got a lot of damage we can still bring in in these last few turns. It is going to be cool with Force 50 how like you could actually carry Force Time outside of it and just keep high percentages. That'll be fun too. That'll definitely be fun. <clears throat> Alright, so Garnet dropping down the Holy Arc there. Big time damage. Dropping some bombs for some off turn. And yeah, we already got him down like 38%. And now you can see Beatrix is in a great spot because she's got six buffs. She actually got so overbuffed, I could never even put Holy Knight Safeguard on. So that would be something if I were to redo the fight, I would prioritize getting that up really early with the BT effect so it doesn't fall off. And then just have her fully buffed. And then, you know, having Holy Knight Safeguard would be a really uh, nice safety net in this fight, right? 
All right, but there you go. We're still have three turns of force and they're down to like 20%. So I'm like, yeah, <laughs> we got this. It might have seemed crazy that we're on turn five and they were still at like full health, but like, yeah, you burn them down really quick when that gauge gets really high. Look at them. They're, they're like basically dead already. Not to mention, we're going to take some counters here. And right there, you can see he tried to blind. And there you go. One enemy dead did not arise. We got the second enemy here. Well, Rose pedals them, Rose pedal them down. And there you go. We still had three turns of force left and we killed them twice. And uh, we got it done. So anyways, guys, let me know how you handled the Final Fantasy IX fight. I will throw out, I think Freya would actually be a really nice character on this fight. So if you maybe don't have all these characters built built up, I think Freya is a really nice budget nine character you could do here. I think Zidane could actually be pretty fun here too. So anyways, let me know what team you did. Thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all on the next one.